and there were tentacle beasts around every corner and I really enjoyed that. Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews. I'm Judith. Welcome to the floor of my reading room once again. Today we're here to review A Deadly Education. I've been a Naomi Novik fan since, well, pretty much since I've been on the bookish internet, so I was very excited to read her latest book, A Deadly Education, and tell you all about it a little bit before release date. Some quick disclaimers before we kick off, I was sent a digital review copy of this book, that's why you're not seeing it behind me. As ever, being sent a free copy of it does not affect my opinions whatsoever. Nobody is paying me to talk about books. If you would like to pay me to talk about books, you can. Second disclaimer, this will be a spoiler-free review. Uh, there will be no spoilers here. I'm gonna do my best to keep them out. You will hear about elements of the plot in this review, so if you want to keep yourself completely free of any expectations, why are you watching a video review? Don't watch this. So if you want to go in knowing nothing, go read it and then come back when you've read the book. Third disclaimer, I'm a white woman reviewing a book in which the main character is not white. So while I am going to talk a bit about the representation in this book, I'm not talking about it from any place of authority or particular wisdom. Remember to go and read Own Voices Reviews. You have been disclaimed! If you for some reason have never encountered Naomi Novik before, let me give you a bit of information. She is an American. I think she's a first generation American. I'm not quite sure what the language around that is because I'm in the UK. Is an American speculative fiction author who's written all sorts of things. She's written all sorts of things including the Temeraire series which is dragons, Spinning Silver and Uprooted which are both original fairy tales. I have all of these on the shelf, I should show you them. I'm not gonna stand up though. <laughs> I didn't know this until I was doing the research for this video but Naomi Novik has a degree in computer science from Columbia which isn't relevant to this book in any way shape or form but I always find it interesting to know what authors did or what they studied or what they were doing before they were authors. So what is A Deadly Education? So this is the first book in what I believe is going to be a trilogy according to Entertainment Weekly in what's going to be called the Scholomance series. This is out on September the 29th from Del Rey in the UK and so it goes on my big list of all the books that I'm excited for that are coming out in September. This series is named after the school in which events take place, the Scholomance. The Scholomance is a school for the magically gifted where essentially you graduate or you die. If you manage to make your way through the school year without being eaten or killed by various beasties that have crawled up through the pipes or vents, then on graduation day the graduating class gets lowered down into the chamber at the bottom of the school where they have to fight their way out. Our main character Elle, who is inconvenienced by her affiliation with really really evil powers that she doesn't necessarily want, is just trying to make her way through the school year, when she starts to uncover some weird stuff that's going on in the school, all while trying to avoid the attentions of school hero Orion Lake. So it's like a magical school with a kind of constant threat of death. Things that I liked about this book, I really liked the setup. I liked that the book starts with Elle being already established in the school. She's not in her graduation year but neither is she in her first year. In the world of magical school literature I feel like the plot would normally start with this kind of like doe-eyed girl starting in magical school and having to learn all the pitfalls and perils. For a variety of reasons I thought it was really smart to have the reader join the narrative at a point where Elle is established. She has a pretty good idea of what she's doing. I think it adds to this idea of a world where these students are in constant fear of being attacked to the point where it has become normal and Elle's kind of jaded towards it. If we're following that Pixar storytelling setup of everything was normal, whatever normal is, until something changed, then in this in this situation normal is already quite weird so having that properly set up and then having the change happen is done really well. The magic system! Who saw this coming? <laughs> I thought this was another really great magic system in part because of the setup. Elle is still learning magic so we get a decent amount of information about how magic works and she's still trying to figure it out but she isn't starting at the very beginning so we still get to see her do some cool stuff. In the school spells are kind of currency, they're part of the bartering system so they're used to trade away so if you discover a really cool spell that could be your key to having an alliance that gets you through graduation. The way that that works is you might ask for a spell for cleaning and the school would fling a book your way but it might be in a language that you barely speak, it might be a very specific kind of spell for cleaning blood off a floor and you actually just wanted to mop, you know, that kind of thing. So Elle quite frequently will ask for a very small spell and get a spell that could like topple an entire empire because of her affiliation with that kind of catastrophic magic. So this follows the idea of magic having a cost, which is quite familiar trope in fantasy fiction. Uh, in this case you build up mana by doing a task that causes you some strain, so a lot of press-ups would generate mana. Crochet generates mana! <laughs> but the other way that you can do magic is if you're a Maleficer? Maleficer. I'm not quite sure. Malficer. That's where you take life energy from other things, so a hamster, and you use that to do your magic, which can have very bad effects on the spell user, but is pretty efficient. 
This book mostly focuses in on the mana stuff. There's some Maleficer stuff happening, but uh, the discussion of mana and how that ties into the theme of privilege in this book, I thought was very interesting. I liked the school, and by talking about the school, I'm really talking about the setting. We get a few kind of anecdotal snippets from the outside world about Elle's past and so such, but the majority of all of the plot is happening in the school and it's about the school. So the scholomance that inspired this story is the scholomance of uh, fable. So it came about, I have written it down, it was referenced in an 1885 article about superstitions in Transylvania. So the school was supposedly run by the devil, there's all of this kind of like fantasy writing about the scholomance. It's referenced by Bram Stoker, it's also apparently referenced by Cassandra Clare, so Mortal Instruments fans. There you go. <laughs> While she is creating a school for magic called the Scholomance where things are pretty bad, Naomi Novik isn't directly referencing the 1800s Scholomance. Her school is one completely sealed off from the outside world. Basically all these children are attracting these evil creatures of various kinds uh, to the school, uh, but the school is sealed off. It's all tied in so that the creatures in theory can't get to them. The creatures that are small enough can get up through the vents and pipes and hide away in nooks and crannies and attack the children. The bigger creatures who can't get through uh, just wait in that graduation hall, growing and feeding on each other, so the biggest survive to attack the graduating class. There's also this idea of the school rotating and lowering, so you start at the top where the beasties are less likely to get you, and you go lower and lower, and then that graduating class is lowered down into the hall, which I thought was really interesting. There's a lot of magical mechanics at play. It's just, it's a stupidly cool setting that you see through a character who's already established in its eyes. I'm going to keep coming back to that idea, but I think it's so clever, the fact that she chose to start the story there. You learn about the school in kind of dribs and drabs. You don't ever get a full set out. There isn't a map in the review copy that I had. It's that thing of where you can't see the edges of it, so it just feels ginormous, but we know it can house thousands of students. It's just a really cool setting and I really liked it. The tone of this book I think is important to mention. This book is written in first person narrative from Elle's perspective, so if you're not in the mood for reading a quite angsty teenage girl, this may not be the book for you. I personally really enjoyed it. It's a magical school where there's a lot of focus on old books and spells and such, but it never feels if you'll pardon the phrasing, up itself. I think part of the reason that worked is that the book looks at both sides of the idea of privilege. So you have both characters who don't have privilege looking at people who do, and characters who do have privilege realising that that is something they have. Or indeed not realising it, but you see that from the lesser character's perspective, you know? I wouldn't say it's a totally fresh take on the issue, but I think it's part of what distinguishes this book from the Dark Academia stuff. So there's kind of a quite casual tone to this book. It feels very modern, in a kind of timeless way. I feel like you could say this book was happening any time within the last 30 years and it would make sense. It's very funny without being a comedy, it's emotional without being completely draining. Essentially it's a very human book for a book where there are tentacles around every corner, and I think it is a good book that crosses over between adult and YA kind of fantasy. Some things to note, uh, I'm still trying to find a way of saying the opposite of the things I did like, but you might like them. Still working on that phrasing. Things to note. The representation. So the main character Elle is half Indian. Uh, her mother and her father met when they were at the Scholomance. There's been a lot of discourse lately about writing characters of colour when you are not an author of colour or you are not own voices that perspective because specifically when you're writing a point of view you have to be able to capture that person's story and identity. So Elle is half Indian and as far as I'm aware I did my research. Naomi Novik is not. Again I'm not the person who can speak on this issue, but what I will say is Elle is not connected to her Indian family pretty much at all. She goes there at one point, but it's part of the story that I don't want to spoil. Although the languages that she knows because of her heritage do come into play as part of the book. I personally, again, not the best person to say it, but I personally don't think the representation was harmful, but I think that the argument would be it's not as nuanced a representation as it would be coming from an author who is half Indian. Uh, I'd recommend going and reading some Own Voices reviews as we come closer to the publication date. I think there will be more people who have read this who can comment on it. My second point, where were the gays? I never want to be one of those people where my sexuality is my entire personality, but in this case I really do have to say it again, where were the gays? <laughs> it's 2020 and you're writing a book about a magical school in which there are thousands of students. Statistically speaking, one of them many more than one, but one of them should have been gay. Like, I could have blinked and missed some LGBTQIA plus representation, but I don't think I did. And I might have understood if there was no romance whatsoever in the book. None at all, because they're all so busy focused on surviving to the end of their graduating year. You know, maybe these teenagers are all way too busy trying to stay alive 
to listen to their hormones. But there is a romance. This main character is discovering all of this extra stuff happening in the school and she still has time to have a romance. Just, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have hurt the book to just have one of the characters be interested in another woman or a man interested in a man or a character who used they them pronouns. It wouldn't be difficult. It's really frustrating because as much as I can say it would be lovely to see that in later books, now if it's in there it's going to feel ten times as tokenistic. It's difficult to ask for representation. Don't write thousands of characters and then have no one be gay. Don't do it. The romance, I do want to touch on the romance. It takes up a fairly big chunk of this book. It's not romance focused but it is really there. I think this book could have been quite happy just being platonic but perhaps that's just me being bitter about the lack of LGBTQ plus stuff. Like it's not really insta-love. It's not an annoying romance by any means. I just think it didn't necessarily need to be there and it might have been something to develop in later books rather than cramming into this one. So some other things you might want to read if you've read this and enjoyed it or if you're just looking to build up your TBR. If you read this and you want more Naomi Novik, my personal favourite is Uprooted. I think it's really really good, though I should say I haven't finished Temeraire so I might enjoy that more, but Uprooted is an all-time favourite though it still does have a sad lack of gay. Do you want a character with a villainous lean to them as your main character in YA? Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow. It's a wicked stepmother retelling, but the wicked stepmother is the main character. Oh, it's so good. You read this one? Yes. If you want a story where the characters are kind of trapped underground, this is kind of my wild card connection, but uh, Face Like Glass by Frances Harding involves everyone being stuck underground in Caverna, an entirely underground city. Uh, just some little comparisons in there for you. Final thoughts. Should you read this? I think absolutely yes. Despite the lack of gay, I think it's a really fun read and it really surprised me. I enjoyed it. I really felt kind of the emotion going through it, which was really good. And I really connected with Elle, the main character. Book one ties off really neatly, which I think leaves a lot of space to develop new things in book two, which I'm hoping that they do. I'm really looking forward to more from Elle and I'll be watching this space. Thank you very much for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Comment below with another book that you think should have been more gay. While you're down there, you can like, you can follow me on all of my socials. They're all listed below. You can also subscribe. It makes me feel loved and appreciated. That's all from me and I will see you in the next one. It's gonna be some bloopers now. Probably too. <laughs> some quick disclaimers before we start off. Uh, I should close my window. Cease your incessant buzzing. So The Scholomance is a fabled school of black magic. This is like, in the real world, The Scholomance is the fabled... Da -na -na -na. Da -na -na -na. I don't